Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to take a look at the tweeno. The tweeno is super useful. It allows you to um, tween values. You can do positions, rotations, colors, you name it, between two values at a set speed. So it's super cool for sort of things like animation or transitions or uh, you know, just sort of anything interactive in the scene. Uh, lots of people have been using other things such as smoothler, constantler, plurps of, of all shapes and sizes to do this. Now you can use the tween node as another option. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to hop into smooth POV and I'm going to show you what we're going to build and talk about and then we're going to build it. So here in smooth POV, and this world will be published into my tutorial world folder. And by that I mean you'll be able to access it from the tutorial world folder. It won't be in the actual world browser. Um, we have a red cube. We have a pink cube and a green cube. Now when I pulse this, you'll see that the pink cube goes to the red cube, and then I pulse again, it goes to the green cube, pulse again, it goes to the red cube, and I can kind of just, uh, oh yeah, I can hit this backwards and forwards. And there you go. So we're going to build that. As you can see, it's not that many nodes. I'll talk about them as we build them, but we're going to do that in a new world so that we can do it all fresh without anything uh, being biased. Actually, we'll just do it behind rather than loading up a new world. So we'll turn around and we'll do it here. So we're going to need three cubes. So create 3D model box, shrink it down, duplicate twice. There's our three cubes. And we're going to color our cubes. We need the green cube, the red cube, and the pink cube. And then we're going to need an inspector on all three of them. So there's the green cubes inspector. There's, oh dear. There's the pink cubes inspector. There's the red cubes inspector. For the purpose of the tutorial as well, I'm going to name them. So we're going to go here and I'm just going to call this R. It's a nice small world so we can get away with naming. R. This one P for pink, and then this one over here will be G for green. I'll show you why we're doing that in a moment, but it, it'll make it easier to kind of play around with them. And then we're going to pull an inspector card for each of them. So to do that, we're going to go up to R here, grab the word R. You'll see R is in my hand now. And then I push secondary and open space, and you'll see we've got an R card. We can now close R. We're done with R. Bring pink along, and we've got a pink card. Bring G along, we've got a G card, and we'll close all the inspectors here. And now we can pull out the name card here for each of these, and that's why we renamed them, just so that when you're watching this back, you can see each one. So now RPG. I like a good RPG game. <laughs> so um, I'm going to move them apart a little bit now, just so we've got kind of like a, a drag race, if you like, going between the pink and the, sorry, the red and the green cube. And we're going to need the tween node. I'll spawn the tween node and we'll talk about it a little bit. You'll see here, actually, I'm going to spawn one directly from the node menu rather than from my tool. So you know where it is. So inside the logic node menu, I'll go to actions and then tween. It's in actions because the way it operates, it's a bit different from, say, a drive node or a maths node. So just remember it's in actions and you'll find it there. So on the left here, we have a pulse node. And this is starts the tween and ends the tween. We have a to and a from. And these are both dummy right now and they're pink. Now that means that they can take sort of any data type. I've tried positions. I have not tried anything else, but it should work with scale, rotation, colors, etc., like that. It should really work with any data type, and you can tween to and from those. There's then duration, which is how long the um, the tween will take. We're going to set that to one for one second. Then there's a curve preset. Just put out a display node with secondary there and play around with it. It affects how quickly the animation sort of spins up and spins down. If you're familiar with tweening from other applications such as Flash or traditional animation, even sort of Blender animation, um, you'll recognize sort of tweening curves from that. Linear, sine, smooth, and smoother. Just play around with them. They're really kind of artistic taste. So I always just leave it on linear and then I play with it once the tween operation is, is functionally working. I then make it look pretty. 
That's it for the left side. Now the tween node has something interesting along with a couple other nodes that one of the right side nodes is white, but it's actually not an impulse. Feedback for the developers here, make this a different color and consider putting it back on the left like other nodes. I know why it's on the right, it's just a little confusing. You can tell it's different by, um, if you put the cursor over here, you'll see it says target I feel dummy. And you can pull this out and it'll bend to the left rather than to the right like this one. That means it's that different node. And this is, what are you twinning? What is the target of your twin operation? In this case, it's the position of the pink cube. So we're going to plug that into position of cube pink, and you'll see that that lines up. Now we're going to plug in the um, from and the two. I do a little bit of a hack when I'm looking at the from here, and I just plug in the current position. So we're going to go back up to the pink cube and plug in the position there into from. So now it'll always tween from where it currently is. And now we can say, hey, let's go to the green cube. So we can plug in the green cube's position here by plugging in green into two. And then when I pulse this, you'll see we move along to the green cube. If I break this wire, just hold trigger to draw that line and cut that rope. And I put in the red cube's position. and I can pulse it and it'll go back to the red one. It'd be great if those alternate. And so we're actually gonna set up a quick operation here to do that. We're gonna use a couple of nodes and I'm gonna explain them as we go. I'm also gonna borrow them from this setup over here, but I'll show you whether in the node menu actually, rather than uh, borrowing them from that. So we're gonna need uh, a Boolean latch that's in flow. So flow Boolean latch. And then we're gonna need a uh, question mark equal or question mark colon or ternary. And we put that here. I'll explain each one. I explain them every time I spawn them, just in case it's your first time seeing them. Boolean latch, think of it like a light switch. So it's got a value, which is if the lights are on and off, and it's got a set, uh, a reset, and a toggle, and the toggle will go between false and true. And it's also got an on set and an on reset, which will fire when you on set or when you on reset it here. That is the Boolean latch. And what it lets us do is it lets us say, like, has something happened? The uh, question mark colon node will output a value based on a condition or a boolean that goes in the bottom here. So if this boolean is true, it will output this top boolean, um, sorry, top value. And if it's false, it will output this second value. This doesn't make much sense as the node currently stands. And that's because all of it is uh, gray, but you can um, fix that up. And the way that we're going to fix that up is we're going to take it over to our positions here and we're going to say, on true, which will be on true, we want to go to the red node, and that's because uh, we're going to set it when we go between red and green. So this, um, the Boolean latch, we're going to set, sorry, we're going to set the Boolean latch when we go towards green. And so the Boolean latch is going to signify, are we at green? And so here we're going to put the position into on true. So it'll be, if we're at green, the position should be red. And then if we're not at green, the position should of course be green. And then we're going to bring, oh, I dropped all of my tools there. We're going to tool shelf there. Yep, there we go. Bring that back here. And then we plug it into the Boolean latch and I'll go over that logic one more time. So if the latch is set, then we're going to go to red. If the latch is not set, we're going to go to green. And then we just need to set the latch. And the way that we set the latch here is, let me just refer back to this a second. Ah, yes, we toggle it on the on done. So when a tween finishes, this on done fires. Um, and there you go. That says that the tween has finished to go in that. So what we want to do here is say, when the tween is done, toggle the latch. And so now you'll see that goes to true, and then when I do it again, it goes to false. So then the last thing to do is just plug this ternary into the two. And now you'll see that we go between red and green. So we'll do that one more time with me explaining it. We're at red, 
the boolean latch is false and so when I hit this it's going to come to the tween node and it's going to tween from the current pink cube's position to the value of this question mark colon node which is currently because this boolean latch is not set it's currently the false value which is the green node so it's going to send it to the green cube so pulse goes to green pulse goes to red so on the way back what happens is um, this is set to true so on the way back this will do the true value which is the red cube's position and it will tween from the pink cube's current position to the red cube's position now that's working we can play around with these so this is sign this is smooth this is smoother And then we're back to linear. You'll see that more on sort of longer animations or slower animations. It's more sort of an artistic or visual thing, so play around with it as you go. A couple of quick notes on tween. Um, when an object is not being tweened, you can grab it. So it's not driven, it's only driven whilst the animation is occurring. So if I up this to 10, and then I grab the cube in the middle of the animation, you'll see weird stuff happens. But once it's done, it'll act normal. And that's because of the way that tween operates on the device, on the object. Let's drop this back to one. And then the other thing to note is that you can chain these. You'll see here there's on started and on done. So you can key off different events on those. So I do a, an on done quite a lot in Spider Island. That's the research world I did with uh, Sydney Human Factors Research, where we do a kind of rotate tween and then a position tween. And we need to wait till the spider has rotated before we tween it moving. That's the tween node. Like I said, this example, because it's a little bit tidier, will be in the tutorial folder. Um, it'll be tutorial files and tween. So you can take a look at that um, and um, load into this and play around with it. Just spam this pulse button and play around with it. Change up these numbers, spawn more cubes. Try tweening other properties of the pink cube. For example, the color, the size, the rotation, anything really. I will see you on the next video. I hope this helps you uh, understand how the tween node works. See you next time.